How are you? Yeah, I'm well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. You were you were showing me your French before we got going. You sounded oh, yeah. great. Thank you. Thank you. I've been practicing. Your Je m'appelle right. Dominique was, was awesome. Je m'appelle Dominique. I say Dominique because Dominique is French, you know, so. Yeah, Dominique. Um, you, you have a really interesting career in the choices you've made. And why did you say yes to this one? What was it about? What was it the story about this one? Yeah, well, to, to be honest, I wasn't sure what the next project should be. I just did Judas and Black Messiah. And uh, I really wanted to do something lighter. You know, like a comedy, I'm way more silly than I get to show. So I was ready to do that. And then this came and I had a little bit of resistance, but Sam uh, saw me in uh, Project Power and he said he made a call and said, oh, I found the girl. We found our Robin. So they really advocated for me to do it. And then as I read the script and read the book, I was like, man, this is really special. This character is special. I have to do it. So um, that's kind of how it how it started. Well, what, what was special about Robin? Um, well, I am from Brooklyn. I'm from East New York. And a lot of times the depictions of of young girls and people from places like that is not always uh, in the best light. And I feel like she is not only is she tough and will fight and defend the people she love with her own her own body, her own fist. But she also has so much compassion and love. And even when the older people that you think would bend over backwards to help this elderly person, they don't do it. She does. She has no connection to him whatsoever, but her heart and her compassion leads her in the choices that she makes. Samuel L. Jackson, I mean, you must have grown up watching him. Absolutely. How is it when you, I could see you smiling there, like how is it when you finally go on set and you have to act with him? Um, well, I definitely look younger than I play on TV. So I have been doing this for a really long time. And I feel like I used to say before I had an agent, before I had any kind of credit, I used to always say, I just want to make sure that when I get into the room, I deliver. Yeah. Right. And so I because I feel like I've been waiting for so long when I get into the room, it's not about, oh, my God, that's Samuel L. Jackson. It's more like, okay, let's do this. What the what does the character need? You know, uh, so when I read the scripts, I saw that a lot of the heart and soul that she had from the book that Walter had so beautifully written wasn't really in the show. So I made a 28 page PDF about the character and the quotes from the book, pictures and ideas like, you know, she's so tough that when you see her, what is it that says she's not to be messed with? messed with before she opens her mouth so i came up with the scar idea and they accepted it but i sent that pdf to sam and walter and other producers saying like i know you guys really wanted me if you uh i'm a type of actor that loves to collaborate loves to talk about character have analogies and build full worlds and i love to share that so i'm hoping that you guys will be receptive to me as that kind of actor and they were so open to it so i i had um like um ownership over the character so I wasn't afraid to speak about what I what I felt in my heart to be true about her. And I think Sam really respected that. That's not the first time that you've done that sort of extra work, you know, um, at the 28 page document, as you mentioned. I know you did it around Jesus and the Black Messiah as well. Why is that? Why is that important for you? Well, usually I journal as my character. So in Judas, I journaled. And then when I sat down to journal as Robin, I couldn't. There was so much resistance. I tried to write and I couldn't do it. And I felt her saying like, I don't know what you did with those other characters, but I don't do that. I don't journal. So I had to find a different way. And ultimately, I think the writing allows me to know the psychology behind who they are, why they do the things they do. So even if I I don't remember every single journal entry or every single page of the of the document, I know that somewhere in my my mind, it's there because I, I wrote it out. So now that it exists, I can make choices that's true to who the character is and not because I think they would do something. Everything that Robin does is because it's true to who she is and how she grew up. It's not me putting anything on her. Where, where did that come from? When did you first start doing that? Where, like, how did that? How did you get inspired to do that in the first place? Uh, well, it was um, during Show Me a Hero, which is the first uh, HBO David Simon project that I did. And a, a castmate, um, Natalie Paul, she would make summaries of her scenes. So I was like, oh, that's a great idea. But as I tried to raise summaries, this started becoming an eye perspective. And then I started saying like, uh, so I as my character. So instead of saying, 
uh, Billy or Darlene did X, Y, and Z, I would say, oh, I walked this way and I was feeling really upset about this. And that, and I started building backstory that wasn't in the script, but I felt like I just roll with it. And then it allowed me to feel a sense of freedom. Whereas like in a deuce, I didn't want to perform as a sex worker. I just like, I knew that no matter how she walked, no matter how she talked, no matter what she did, she was going to be that because that was her job. So I didn't have to put anything on her to be convincing as a sex worker. I just had to exist and be true. So, so I, I felt freedom in the fact that if I know the psychology of the character, then I don't have to uh, be nervous about how to act them. And it's, it must also be a way to be more protective of your mental health versus like living as your character, you know, as opposed to, you know, I'm sure you've met people like this who dress like their character and only can be addressed by their character and all that. And no, by the way, no disrespect to that, if that's your process. But Mm -hmm. this journaling seems like sort of a safer way for your psyche to handle that. Well, hopefully, because I do find that uh, I kind of cut in and out of character really quick. So if we're doing a scene that's really emotional, I could be crying and they say cutting and I'm like saying a joke. And then I go home and I don't do anything to like decompress from the character. So I don't know if they're all like piling up inside of me. So I have to like (laughs) reevaluate if it's better for my mental health. But uh, but yeah, I've never done it where I I had to be called the character or stay in character. Um, But I'm sure it's really interesting. I'm sure it is, too. I thought we could go through a couple of scenes of the of the show. together. So so this is where Robin, your your character, meets Ptolemy, Sam's character for the first time, Samuel. L. Jackson's character at his great nephew's funeral. The great nephew, Reggie, was the only person who was checking in on Ptolemy and caring for him. Now he's gone. Ptolemy's really confused and he's introduced to Robin, you, by his great niece. Yes. There's somebody I want you to meet. Pity Papa, this here is my best friend, Frida's little girl, Robin. Frida died, so now Robin lives here with me and Haley. Robin, this is my mother's brother, Mr. Ptolemy Gray. Ptolemy Gray, Ptolemy Gray. Huh? Robin. First bird of spray. She might be coming by to help you out sometime. Isn't that right? I guess. How do you describe the man that Robin meets there in that scene? Well, I, I think that for Robin, she's been uh, she's been around a lot of men who have taken advantage of her or wanted more than what she was willing or wanting to give. And so she's very defensive. You know, he's an older guy and it means nothing to her that he's older. It just she's just another guy. And now her aunt or surrogate aunt, if you want to call her, is saying you're going to go over and help this man. So she's like, again, being put into the the will of of other people and especially men. So she doesn't really have any kind of uh, compassion for him yet. She's just like he's just another another guy. And that, that that compassion is is kind of what I wanted to talk about in the next clip. So yeah. Ptolemy is in the full throes of dementia. And then in, in episode two, this is after Ptolemy receives the first dose of an experimental treatment to reverse the dementia. He seems like a very different person. He's in possession of all his faculties. And he's decided to find out what happened to his great nephew. Take a listen. Mm-hmm. You got a call? No, I'm not going to call one. Do that. I want to go see where Reggie got killed at. But the shot the doctor gave you only going to last maybe a half a day, and then you'll forget again. And you had about four hours ago already. Well, I guess you better hurry up then. So Robin ends up caring for two versions of Ptolemy, the Ptolemy on the medication who's quite lucid, and the Ptolemy um, suffering deeply from dementia. I guess how does how does Robin, in your approach to it, reconcile the two versions of this man both of which she's grown to love. Mm-hmm. I think for her, the I think initially she feels a bit selfish because he knows she knows once he takes the the drug that he has autonomy over his, his body and he can do whatever he wants. But she also feels like she's losing him. She doesn't know this guy, so she doesn't want him to be weak and, and fragile. But there's a vulnerability that he has when he's in that state that makes her feel protective and she's usually protective of everyone um, and she doesn't really know how to be protected. So now this person is coming up saying, you need this and you need that. And she's like, hold up, I don't need anything. And she doesn't know how to be loved. So I think the initial the initial Ptolemy that she meets is um, a comfort zone for her. And then the other one allows her to feel so safe that she can soften. And then we get to see her soften. 
that's the second time you've mentioned that she doesn't know how to be loved. That, that, that That's obviously a big part of the way you see the character. Yeah, I, I don't know if I don't know if she doesn't know how to be loved. I just know that she hasn't been loved properly in a way that a lot. And then so when she sees a different kind, she uh, I think she's resistant of it in, in the beginning because she doesn't feel safe. Once she feels safe, though, she is laughing. She's smiling. That was something that was really important to me. I wanted to make sure that um, a lot of times the world wants the smile of a woman especially like black women. Why you ain't smiling other than that? And I wanted to make sure that everybody that she comes across in this show has to earn her smile. You're not gonna just get it. She's been through so much in her life. She has so much trauma that it's, she's not gonna just smile as a doctor because he he thinks he's telling something good to her. She don't trust him. You know, she's not gonna just smile at Hilly or smile at Roger, the new guy that comes around. He wants to be nice and grab her bags. She's like, what's that about? I don't trust nobody. Until you until you show me that I can trust you. Do you remember the first earned smile you had to act in doing this show? Oh, that's a good. Uh, I remember. I think it had to be around uh, after they come back from getting the bug bug bomb juice for the roaches, and she says to him, "Thank you for what you said," and he doesn't even remember what he said, and that's like. Uh, you know, like, it's like, okay, I understand. I have to accept him for who he is. And of course it meant a lot to me. He don't even, he didn't, so he didn't do it for what he thought he can get from me. Yeah. I should say he he sticks up for you for people who haven't seen it. He sticks up for you in that moment. Yeah. 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 I think that it was where the first little smile was earned. And then we see her when she sees, before she meets the guy, Roger, um, when she comes out of the store, she sees the little kid with the big hair and she's smiling at that kid so hard. And then Roger goes, hey girl. And that, her, immediately that smile goes away. And it's like, what you want? And he goes, your name Robin. And I, I, I ad-libbed her saying, if you knew my name was Robin, why are you calling me girl? Right, because it's like, I think she's very, she's ready to catch anybody in, in the act of like trying to pull one or pull, pull a fast one on her. What a, what a, I mean, sorry. I should say I don't. I don't act. I don't know anything about acting, but I'm really, really fascinated by it. Oh, thank you. And the idea that you would give that much thought to what seems like such a small physical action in this show. I mean, I'm sure the stage direction could just say Robin smiles, but that you would see such meaning in that. I, mean, I just think it's it's there's something so beautiful about it. You know. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of it's interesting. I like um. Walter is very, um, he's a very like collaborative writer as well. This so, is Walter Mosley, the guy who Walter wrote the, Mosley, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. wrote the book and also the, the screenplay. Yeah. Um, they, I don't remember there being a lot of Robin smiles or Robin does X, Y, and Z. I personally, as an actor, I, I do try to acknowledge what was written, but I don't try to stay with the stage directions. You know, I feel like that could be a little, a little bit limiting sometimes. Um, so I tried to like, that's why the journaling and the writing really helped because now I know, would she actually roll her eyes there? Probably not. Would she actually smile there? Maybe not. But past past the journaling, I mean, you're a, quite an accomplished writer. You wrote this incredible play, Subverted, as your honors thesis at Pace University. You played over 20 different characters in it. How do your instincts as a playwright, as a writer, inform your acting? Yeah. Um, it... Well, I started acting and writing at the same time when I was 15 in a theater company called MCC. Um, we had to, in order to act, you had to write your own monologues and your own scenes and your own poetry, whatever you wanted to perform. So that already gave me a sense of uh, storytelling. So I think that is ultimately what actors are doing, we're, we're storytelling. I just found a different way to get into it to where I could feel comfortable coming to a set because I know the inner, inner workings of the mind. So now every action that I do, I'm not trying to do it because it's going to be interesting. I'm doing it because that's true to who this person is, at least as far as I can see. That The idea of truth is really scary, I find, when you watch this. I, I don't know about you, but I felt that, I felt watching this show the same way I felt watching... Have you seen The Father, the Anthony Hopkins movie? No, I haven't. It's about, you know, it's about someone suffering from dementia. And I spoke to Anthony Hopkins about it, and he said to me, you know, this is scarier than any horror movie you could ever imagine. You know, the idea of losing oneself. And, you know, when I was doing research for this, I saw Samuel L. Jackson talk about how personal 
the story is to him as dementia runs through his own family. It's something that's on his mind a lot. Yeah. You know, Dominique, again, like, only tell me as much as you want here. I wouldn't ask uh, for you to go to personal. I get the feeling you wouldn't you wouldn't go there anyway if you didn't want to. But you know, how, what did you ha- how did you manage to access that part of the story for yourself? Um, well, I didn't do a lot of research on dementia or Alzheimer's. I didn't do any at all, to be honest, because Robin wasn't really aware of that condition anyway. Yeah. So she's taking him at face value. So all I could do was take this person at at face value and respect where he is mentally, even if I don't understand it, you know, he might say like the devil's in here, girl. And like, instead of being like, there's no devil, I kind of, I kind of support him. Like, yeah, yeah, there is. Right. Because at this point, his, his mind is so far gone. Why would I make him feel worse about not being able to connect in the 3d level that we can understand. Right. So it's very much being present and, and looking into the eye of the person and then deciding. Uh, two days ago, actually, it was the 10 year anniversary of my grandmother passing from cancer. And uh, we were all living in this small apartment in East New York, Brooklyn. She had an oxygen tank. And, you know, some days she'd be really nice. Some days she'd be really mean. Some days I felt like I'm the best granddaughter. Some days I felt like I'm not. And uh, when they pass, you start to feel like, was I, did, did they know that I love them really? You only think about the times when you had an attitude. You don't, you could, you can think of the good de- times, but a lot of times those things outweigh the good moments because you felt, you can feel so guilt ridden. And I think with using this role, I felt like it was like healing for me as well. Robin only ever loved Ptolemy unconditionally and, and um, treated him as fair as, as possible. Um, and I think that that's, I think that's, Beautiful. So it was like almost like redemption. She had her own redemption. It's kind of like mine a little bit. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. And because it reminds me, I think Samuel L. Jackson said about this show that it it was ultimately about family, even though, you know, Robin, your character, and Ptolemy Samuel's character are not directly related. It is still about family. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you see family in this show? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean... Robin at this point is an orphan. She has no blood relatives that she can call on. She has her auntie Nisi, but as you see in the beginning, that kind of goes away for her own blood, right? So we, you can be family all day, and then when her blood son needs something or is whatever, question, the situation is questionable, she's the one to get the boot, and she's always been the one to get the boot. So when Ptolemy offers like, oh, you can have this room if you want to, even though he's out of it, She's not getting the boot. Um, and I think family is the people, pe- family can be the people that you decide, the people that you get to spend time with and that you you love and that you that understand you. And I don't think that time really matters. As you can see in the show, they didn't know each other for years, but they knew each other deeply. What will That's you, true. maybe this is a good way to close things off. What were you, what's something you will take from working on this show that you'll take into your future projects? Um, well, it, it's so funny that we talked about the show being about, um, potentially people losing themselves because of this, this disease. But at the beginning of shooting it was my birthday and Sam gave me, uh, the book as I am by Cicely Tyson. And as I watched Sam operate in the world, he, the way he is in interviews, the way he is on social media is the way he's going to be on set. And a lot of times as young actors or young black actors, you you get taught in school that you have to be one way. So you go to set and you try to be perfect. You don't want to have a bad day. You don't want to have any mood swings. You don't want to be misunderstood for fear that that you might lose an opportunity or somebody will understand you wrong or interpret something the way you didn't mean. Right. And on this project, I really said, you know what? I'm going to be myself. I'm from Brooklyn. I talk on my voice. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's and and when I'm passionate about something, I talk like this. And a lot of times you get, you know, you want to assimilate. You want to say, oh, let me let me talk like this so they won't feel like it's aggressive. And then there I was like, no, I really feel like Robin is this. She feels like this. And and at the end, that's okay. Cause I'm fighting for the character. And I I would say stuff like, um, and I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just passionate about my character. You know, I would have to do that. I'm stop, I'm stop, I'm not doing that anymore because I just want to be as I am and be myself. So, but I think I'm going to take that every project I go to is just be yourself. 
What a beautiful thing to take away. And what a lovely perspective to hear on, on acting and the whole thing. Thanks so much for Thank you. making the time. It's lovely to talk to you. Same here. Same here. I look forward to doing it again. Me too. Dominique Fishback stars in the new series, The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray. The first two episodes are out today on Apple TV+.